Thanks for clicking on this video. Today we're going to be working with estimating the area under a curve. If you want to follow along, the links to the companion worksheet are in the description below. Also, don't forget to click that subscribe button to stay up to date on all the videos we have coming out from the channel. So what we're doing is we're estimating the area under a curve. Now we're going to start with this first example with a line. Now with a line we could actually get a little more accurate, but it gives us a good starting point for when we actually start to deal with curves. And so what we have is we have a function and we have an interval. In this case from negative 7 to negative 5. And so what we want to do is down here is negative 7 and down here is negative 5. And so we have from here to here. Now, if, now what we want to do is we want to take this region and we want to break it up into strips. Now, the number of strips is going to be indicated by the problem you want to solve. And so part A says we want to do what's called RRAM with two subintervals. So what we're going to do is we're going to take this from seven, from negative 7 to negative 5, and we want to break this into two pieces. So at negative 6, we're going to fill that in. So what we have from negative 7 to negative 5 is we have two strips. The first one from negative 7 to negative 6, the second one from negative 6 to negative 5. And what we want to do is we want to treat each strip like a rectangle. Now, it's not. We know that. That's why it's, we call this estimating the area. But it gets us pretty close. Now, what these two rectangles, these two strips, have in common is that they have a width of 1. But what's different about them is their height, because it's not flat at the top. And so how do we, make, how do we figure out the area of these strips? And that's where these terms RRAM and LRAM come into play. This is just shorthand for Right Rectangular Approximation Method. Basically what this means is we take each strip and we take the right-hand side as the height. So for this first rectangle from negative 7 to negative 6, we're going to use the right-hand side. So I have this point right here at negative 6, 11. And then we have this point here at negative 5, comma, 10. And then, just fill this in because we will need it, negative 7, comma, 12. So, if we're going to use our RAM, then we're going to use the right-hand side. So this strip is going to be 11 units high because that is the height on the left-hand side for this rectangle. Similarly, for this rectangle here, we use the right-hand side, which is 10. So this rectangle has an area of, well, 11 times the width of 1. So that first rectangle has an area of 11. That second rectangle has an area of 10 times 1. So that means using the right-hand side, we get an estimate of about 21. Now LRAM takes the same idea, except that instead of using the right-hand side to determine how tall each strip is, we use the left-hand side to determine how tall each strip is. So from negative 7 to negative 6 right here, we're going to use 12, the left-hand side. So that means this strip has an area of 12. And then this strip from negative 6 to negative 5, we're going to use this point, the left-hand side, which is a height of 11, to be the height of that rectangle. So that means, using LRAM, we get an estimate of 23. Now, what we can also do is we can also break this region from negative 7 to negative 5 into smaller subintervals. And so, if we break it up into more pieces, it's going to give us a better approximation. So here for C and D, it says break it up into four subintervals. So what we do is right now we have two subintervals, so we have to break this in half again. So we're going to break that in half, and we're going to break that in half. And what that does is now we have four strips instead of two. 
So I need to label this point up here and this point up here. So this is negative six and a half, comma, 11.5. And this point right here is negative 5.5, comma, 10.5. And so using our RAM, now we have these four strips. So we're going to add up four different areas. And each of these rectangles has the same width, has a width of one half. We've got to keep that in mind. So this first strip, if we're going to use our RAM, has a width of one half, and we're going to use the right hand side. So that's going to have a height of 11.5. So that means. Our first strip is 0.5 times 11.5. That's the area of the first one. Our second strip, this one, has a width of 0.5, and using the right-hand side has a height of 11. So 0.5 times 11. Our third strip has a width of 0.5, and using the right-hand side has a height of 10.5. 10.5. And then our final strip has a width of 1 half and a height of 10. Now one thing people notice when they do this is they notice that, well, if the widths are all the same, you can make this calculation a little bit easier. You factor out the width, because they all have it in common. So if I factor out 0.5, then I have 11.5 plus 11 plus 10.5 plus 10. So, 11.5 plus 11 plus 10.5 plus 10. So if we add that quickly, we get 43. So 0.5 times 43, and so we get 21.5 as our approximate. Now using LRAM, we do the same thing except that we use the left-hand side of each interval. So each of these rectangles is 0.5. Now the first one is going to have a height of 12. So 0.5 times 12. The second one, the second strip, has a width of 0.5, and that's going to have a height of 11.5. Again, because that's the left-hand side, and we're using LRAM. So 0.5 times 11.5. The third strip, this has a width of 0.5, and it has a height of 11. 0.5 times 11, and then finally the last strip has a width of 1 half, and since we're using the left-hand side, it has a height of 10.5. And since all the widths are the same, we can factor it out. So we have 0.5 times 12, plus 11.5, plus 11, plus 10.5. So 12 plus 11.5, plus 11, plus 10.5. That gives us 45. And then when we divide that by 2, we get 22.5. And that is our LRAM approximation with four subintervals. So let's look at another example. So here we've got this function, negative x squared plus 2x plus 11 on the interval from negative 1 to positive 3. So here's what this graph looks like. And so here is negative 1, and here is 3. All right. Now, First, for A and B, we want to do LRAM and RRAM with two subintervals. So from negative 1 to 3, I want to divide this into two equal pieces. So the halfway mark between negative 1 and positive 3 is at 1. And when we do LRAM and RRAM, we want our strips to be the same width. It makes it a little bit easier for us. Now to make things easier for us also, we need to label these three points. We have negative 1, comma, 8. Now if you're unsure how to do that, remember we're given the function, which means given the x value, we can find the y value. At 1, the
the y value is 12. And at 3, the y value is also 8. So if we want to do our RAM, notice that the width here of both of these strips is 2. So the first strip, if we use the right-hand side, is going to be 2 times this right-hand side height of 12. So that's going to be 24. For the second strip, it has a width of 2 times a height of 8 plus 16. So that gives us a value of 40. Now, if we do LRAM, something interesting happens because we have a width of 2 times the height of 8, since we're using the left-hand side. So we get 16. Plus, we have a width of 2 times a height of 12, which is going to give us 24, and we get the same value. Now, is that answer then exactly 40? No. The reason that it works is, is that this graph is symmetric. It goes up and comes back down. And when it does that, LRAM and RRAM are going to be the exact same values, just how it works. Now, for letter C and letter D, we're going to do a similar thing, except we have four subintervals now. Right now, we have two strips. We need four. So if I divide this right here, this point is 0, 11. And here, this point is going to be 2, 11. Now what's nice is, is that with four subintervals, each strip has a width of 1. So the area is just going to be 1 times whatever the height is. So with the RRAM of four subintervals, with this first strip, the area is going to be the height, which is 11. For the second strip, it's going to be 12. For the third strip, it's going to be 11. And for the fourth strip, it's going to be 8. So when we add those up, we get 42. Now, since this is symmetric, we should get the same answer for LRAM, but let's just be sure. So for the first strip, we use the left-hand side, and that has a height of 8. Times 1 is an, gives us an area of 8. For the second strip, the left-hand side is 11. So that area is 11. For the third strip, the left-hand side is 12. And for the fourth, fourth strip, the left-hand side is 11 also. So we get 42. Again, this happens because the curve is symmetric. That doesn't mean 40 or 42 is the actual area. But when it's symmetric, these two will coincide. All right. Now for the last one, here we have this graph. Negative x squared over 2 plus 6 is our function, and we want the interval from 0 to 5. So here we have 0. And this is at the point 0, 6. And then we have the interval at 5. And at 5, by the looks of it, we have negative 5.25. Nope, that should be negative 6.5. There we go. Now what we want to do is we want to break this up into five subintervals. So we want to strip at 1. We want to strip at 2. We want to strip at 3. And we want to strip at 4. Now what's different here is that now we're dealing with y values that are both positive and y values that are negative. Now the thing is, people think that when you're dealing with y values that are, ne that are negative, the rules change. Actually, they don't. We still do everything as we have done. 
So when we have a y value of 1, x value of 1, sorry, we have a y value of 5.5. For an x value of 2, we have a y value of 4. For an x value of 3, we have a y value of 1.5. And then for an x value of 4, we have a y value of negative 2. Now in each case, each of these strips has a width of 1. So finding area is easy. It's just 1 times whatever the height is. So if I want to do RAM, I take the right-hand side of each of these five strips, regardless of whether it's positive or negative. If the height is negative, it just means that it's below the y-axis. That's all it means. So for this first strip, the right-hand side height is 5.5. So that's the area of that strip. For the second, the height is 4. So that's the area. For the third strip, the right-hand side is 1.5. For the fourth strip, now it's kind of weird. How can you picture this as a rectangle? Well, you just imagine that it's down here. And so this has a height of negative 2. And then finally, this last strip, way down here has a height of negative 6.5. And so add it all together, minus 2, minus 6.5, we get an estimate of 2.5. That's our RAM estimate. And so the, the area of a rectangle is still the base, length of the base, times the height. And in this case, the height can be negative. Negative just because instead of going up, it goes down. It's the only difference between the other between the previous examples. So for LRAM, we'll do the same thing. Except now, instead of taking the right hand side, we take the left hand side of each strip as the height. So one times six is the area of the first strip. The second strip is one times five and a half. The third strip is 1 times 4. The fourth strip, 1 times 1.5. And then the last strip is 1 times negative 2. So now when we add these 5 up, we get an estimate of 15. Now again, these are just estimates of the area. It's not finding the exact area. And all we're doing is just taking these regions and breaking them into strips so that we can make them look like rectangles. So LRAM looks something like this. Here's one rectangle. Here's a second rectangle. Here's a third rectangle. Here's a fourth rectangle. And then here is the fifth rectangle. It's underneath. So this counts as negative area. So these first four were positive, six, five and a half, four, one and a half, and then the last one, because it was underneath the y-axis, counted as negative area. Thanks for watching. If you liked the video, please give it a thumbs up. If you have suggestions or other problems you want to see worked out, type a comment below. To support the channel, click the Patreon link to help keep this going. Thanks so much for watching, and remember, the best way to understand something is to do it.